High Crafters Sharing a Rotating Organizer with a Double Photo Display Unit. This project was made using graphic 45 papers and chipboard and it's quite sturdy and can hold quite a bit of weight. It is in the shape of a hexagon and has a double rotating mechanism. Here is how the photo frames can be removed to reveal hidden photo frames inside. The photo frames on the outside of the box have magnets and hence are easy to remove and place back. The photos inside, that is the photos underneath, can be removed by a sliding mechanism once you remove the lid. So here I have removed the lid. And that is the hexagonal box with the partitions. It is quite sturdy as it is made of chipboard. This is how you can remove the photographs. The box has a double rotating mechanism. So this is the second rotating mechanism. This is based on a skewer and a CD mechanism which I will show you later in this tutorial. The base is made out of a thick MDF circle decoupaged with graphic 45 papers and it rests on a lazy Susan. So you have an additional surface to place your supplies on while you are working on a project. Now let me remove the lid. So since it's decoupage it's quite smooth and can hold a lot of things. And you have an additional storage unit inside which is ideal to hold dies, fuzzy cut images, embellishments and whatever else you are working on while you are doing a project. Once you are done you can put the lid back and here let me place the box back on the base. That's a triangular box I have a tutorial to on YouTube already. And finally, the lid goes on. Part of the tutorial, I'll tell you how to make the triangular units of the hexagonal box. You need 18 pieces of 4 and 3 fourth into 6 inch cardstock. Fairly thick cardstock is good. After scoring half inch on either side, cut wedges to help you to glue the pieces in place. Once scored, fold along the score lines and you will need three pieces to form a triangular unit. So this is how you are going to place your pieces before you glue them in place. Before gluing it you need to reinforce your card with chipboard. So this is the die chipboard and I've cut it slightly smaller than the cardstock. This will help you to fold it and glue it easily without warping the paper. It's easier if you start with the central segment. Place the other two chipboard pieces leaving a 1 8 inch gap between the chipboard pieces. Glue the overlapping tabs at the base and this is how you will have your triangular prismatic units. Assemble 6 such pieces to form your hexagonal box. So you can glue it all together using the help of binder clips and masking tape. Once the box is ready, trace the box outline on chipboard and cardstock. If you want to make a sturdy box, use two pieces of chipboard as that will help you to hold a little bit of weight and increase the sturdiness of your project. So these are the two hexagons cut from chipboard. Mark the centers of the hexagon and punch them out. I've used a crocodile here to punch out the holes. The hole should be big enough to thread a fairly thick skewer through it. 
the skewer is going to form part of your rotating mechanism and I'll show that to you later in the tutorial. So I've used one hexagon to punch a hole in the other by using it as a template. Wrap the chipboard pieces in cardstock. I've used black cardstock here and these are the gluing tabs which will help glue it all together. This black cardstock piece should also have a hole punched out. In this picture, in this picture frame you don't see a hole, but a hole needs to be punched to hold a skewer. So you need two CDs and a circle of chipboard with cardstock and a skewer to form your rotating mechanism. Stick the CDs on a circle, that is the circle of chipboard and the hexagonal chipboard base you've already made. The skewer will be inserted onto your hexagonal box. The length of skewer you need will depend on the thickness of your hexagonal chipboard, chipboard base and your circular chipboard. So align the chipboard board and stick this chipboard hexagon onto your hexagonal box. Since you've traced it out, you need to be sure you're sticking it in the correct place, otherwise it will look quite uneven. So hold it in place firmly. So that is the skewer going through the hexagonal chipboard and coming out through your circular chipboard. To finish it off, add a piece of cardstock. Now flip it and your rotating mechanism is ready. Wasn't that easy? Now to decorate your box, I have used again graphic 45 papers. The measurements I am mentioning in this tutorial need not be the exact measurements of your box as there will be quite a bit of variation depending on the size of the chipboard you are using. The essence is that you are going to make score lines to fit the width of your chipboard. So mine is 1 4th inch thick, sorry, 1 8th inch thick and that is what I am used on the outer parts of the hexagonal box. The top of the spokes of the box will be double chipboard thickness and that is why I am going to score it at a 1 4th inch thickness width in the middle of this gluing pieces. So that is the pattern paper going on to the central spokes. The size of your cardstock or pattern paper which you are going to use the, to line the box will also vary depending on the thickness of your chipboard. Since it's a handmade project, quite a bit of variation is ex expected, so it is better to measure and glue as you go along. As you can see here, this particular piece is not fitting in and I had to trim it and later use it. To create the pattern paper piece which goes outside the box, I've used a piece of paper 4 and 3 4 inch and 5 and a half inch and scored it half an inch fold it in place, make six such pieces and this is how you are going to place it on the outer part of your hexagon box. This gives a neat and tidy covering for the outer part of your box. So this is how the box looks, you just need to finish it off by adding triangles on the inside part. Again one size will not fit all, so measure as you go. Now let's make the sliding photo frame. Use dies or manually cut photo frames as shown in the picture. Make photo sleeves, that is you need to make three photo sleeves which will go on the sides of the photo frame as shown and one in the lower part. 
the length of your photo sleeve will depend on the die cut or photo frame you have created. So my measurement need not be what you are going to be using. The point is to create a photo sleeve which has a 1 8 inch width in the middle. This helps you to slide your photos in and out easily without getting stuck. Optionally cut wedges on these photo sleeves to help you glue it to your photo frame easily. Do the same thing to the other photo sleeve. And this is how the photo sleeves are going to be placed behind your photo frame. So that is the lower one on which your photo is going to rest. This is medium thickness cardstock, around 200 grams as we call it here in India. That is how we fold it to get a 1 8 inch width to help your photo slide in and out easily. So I am cutting wedges. And this is how you are going to stick the pieces in place behind your photo frame. And that will be stuck onto your hexagonal box. Now let's make the magnetic photo frame. You can make this flat or give it a prop like I have done in this project. So create a custom made photo mat using punches or you can use dies which are available nowadays. Please help you to change your picture when you want. You can use pictures or inspirational quotes like I have done here using papers from Graphic 45. Here I am showing you how to form the props for the placing the magnets. So score every one fourth inch. So this is quite a tiny bit and this is going to be a fiddly step. That is why I am using the middle part of my scoreboard. Fold along the score lines and stick the ends using tacky glue or tacky tape. So that is how it comes about. So it's quite a tiny piece. Using a tiny support helps you maximize the photo you are going to be using. So this photo mat which is lying in front of your sliding photo frame is the size big enough to cover the aperture and hide it in place. So I have stuck these supports here and I will be adding magnets on top of it. You can use tiny magnets. For the sake of this tutorial, I am using big magnets as I used up all my small magnets while making the project. So these are quite big for this. It is ideal to use magnets as small as your that magnetic support you just made. So align the photo frame and the photo mat using a grid surface. I've used my glass mat here. So that's how you put the magnets. Make minor adjustments to align it perfectly. Now you can stick the magnets in place using pattern paper as a cover. So this is how it looks as I've already shown you earlier in this video. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you so much for watching.